to another episode of Groovy Tuesday. My name is Paul Church from Clarity here in the UK. How's everybody doing today? Um, I know it takes a while for people to find us, um, but I can see that the lovely Karen is already in the room and posted. Um, she's in a sunny Shoreham this morning. Good morning, Karen. I, um, I can see people are starting to tune in now. So good morning and welcome. We are on episode 106 of Groovy Tuesday. Good morning, Mo. All good today, absolutely. Always good on a Tuesday, um, especially at 10 o'clock or just before 10 o'clock. There we go, here comes everybody. We've got Karen, we've got Ken, we've got Anja. Lovely to have everyone. See, everyone, all of a sudden everyone starts sort of piling into the room. Um, plenty of time, plenty of space. Pull up a chair, pull up a sofa, pull up a bean bag. Um, wherever you are, we've got the lovely Jane in the room. Good morning, Jane. Roz, raining in Crawley. Well, Roz, you can keep the rain in Crawley because it's lovely and sunny here <laughs> in Edenbridge. So, um, in Kent. What's the weather like with everybody else today? Um, got lovely Alison in the room. Um, the sun is out today at last. Ruth, where are you, Ruth? Whereabouts in the, in the world are you? That should be my text message from Stuart. Sounds good. Thank you very much, Stuart. Stuart is in the room with you today. So if you have any questions and um, need to know anything, if I, as we're talking, we're going along, then I'll ask Stuart to pop some link up, links up. Good morning, lovely Pat Hoskins, Pat Coombs. Um, Pat Coombs is going out to where? Crewkern for a day as it's sunny and not rainy. Where's Crewkern? Have I pronounced that wrong? I probably pronounced it completely wrong. <laughs> um, good morning, Margaret Glynis is in the room. Sun is trying in between showers. Is that you in between showers, Glynis, or you mean the rain? <laughs> no, I'm in a silly mood today, so this hour could be be fun. I could be talking a load of gibberish halfway through this show. Uh, what, what else have we got? It's in Somerset, pronounced perfectly. Thank you. I'm terrible at pronunciations. Um, yeah. Good morning from a cold and rainy South Norway. Good morning, Alan. I know, isn't it strange? I mean, the weather's the weather at the end of the day, isn't it? And um, at the weekend, we was, or the weekend coming, um, possibly going to the Hickstead Horse Show over near Haywards Heath. But it all depends on the weather. And um, previously when we've been, we've had really good weather. Um, so I think we're meant to be going on the Sunday to that. That's quite, I like watching the, the horse jumping and um, just walking around. And also one of the main reasons for going there is they do those fresh hot donuts. <laughs> Sad, I know. Um, but I do love a fresh, you know, the, the donut rings where they dip in loads of sugar. <sighs> I eat a whole bag in one go. It's like you go down to the beach um, and they have the, the the little vans or the little kiosks. I have to get some and I have to eat them as, they, as they're hot. So... Um, I know, terrible, 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 terrible. So I hope everybody's well. Um, just gone 10 o'clock and I can see the room is filling up nicely. So have we got any first timers out there today? Anyone tuning in for the first time? Um, Humberta is in Warren, Rhode Island, USA. Good morning, evening, afternoon. Rubbish with, I'm rubbish with everything, really. rubbish with time zones. I just about know what time it is uh, in the UK. Um, I know, sorry for making you all feel hungry, but I can just, those donuts, I can smell them, I can taste them. <laughs> I told you it's going to be a silly hour. Um, but yeah, those donuts are the best. It doesn't matter where in the country you go, um, they're always the same and they've got to be hot as well. That's the part, and all the grease on the, so I know it's sad, going to a horse show just to get some donuts. 
no, I do enjoy the, watching the, the horse jump in. And they often have like the little um, Shetland Pony derbies, like Grand National type thing. Um, so it's, and if the weather's good, it's a lovely day. So, um, so as I was saying, let's get, let's get back to Groovy Tuesday. Um, we've had our weather reports. I sidetracked over to Hickstead and Donuts. And uh, we're on episode 106. We're on part seven of the leafy frame. Now, last week I spoke about um, what we'd be looking at next, which was going to be the Pergamano um, Multi-Needle Handbook Volume 2. And we're still going to do that. But so we've got this week today and then next week. And then the week after we have our summer retreats so that I'll be off for a week not off for a week, but I'll be away from here for a week. So rather than sort of start next week with the Multi-Needle Volume Tool, Volume 2 Toolbook, and let me show you what I'm talking about. Um, this handbook here, and many of you took advantage of our Half Price Club member sale because I saw those um, popping into baskets. So what I thought we would do so it's the week commencing, I think it's the 7th of August. There'll be no Groovy Tuesday because it will be day one of our summer retreats. So the week after, we will start on this handbook. And what it also means is that it gives the picking and packing department a um, chance to pick all those sale orders and get it out to you in time for that. I was trying to sort of pull them through and, and stuff like that, but they're sort of, they've had a lot of orders. You've really have enjoyed the half price member sale and I'm not mentioning any names on how many orders people have placed like Ken, Jill, Glynis, Jane, so yeah, I've, I've seen them all um, <laughs> so um, so yeah so that will give the team the chance to get the books and the tools out for there so this week and next week we're going to carry on with the lovely leafy frame and then we'll have a natural break for a week while we do the summer retreats. And then when we come back, we'll go to the book and we're going to start to work our way through. Now, if you've got the book, then you'll know exactly um, where it starts. Um, but we'll have a look at this in a little bit more detail later for those of you that maybe are. Um, sorry, Glynis, didn't mean to grass you up. It was only one and a half orders. Um, no. <laughs> Pete's not listening, is he, Glynis? So, and it's all for you to make samples with. So it's not as if, yeah, exactly. So, right, okay, I'm in trouble now. Uh, da, 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 da. <laughs> Pat Coombs, yes, Pat Coombs. <laughs> uh, she's hoping her husband will be in the garden when the postman starts delivering. I don't think it'll be the postman, Pat. Uh, postman, Pat. I don't think it'll be the postman. <laughs> Not from what I remember of your orders. Um, sorry, Pete. Pete, Glynis didn't buy anything. No, it's all stuff that's for um, making samples. She didn't buy anything on this. Right, okay. So during the course of this hour, it, it really is going to be a silly hour this hour. Um, we're going to carry on with our project using the um, plates we've been looking at over the past two weeks or seven weeks now and um, I'm going to give you a sneaky peek of the new designs from the new and exclusive which launches on Crate and Craft on Thursday and I've got some stunning artwork to share with you from Linda Williams and the fantastic design team so you have to make sure you stay tuned for that. Um, we'll have a recap on what TV shows we've got coming up over on Thursday and Friday. And um, yeah, I think we're just going to have a nice, chilled, fun hour. And that's what it's all about, isn't it? It's all about sort of, so if you've got any questions, this is a great opportunity to sort of, because I'm going to sort of waffle and sort of um, do, try different things. So if you want to see how something's done, um, <laughs> So, um, yeah, just ask away. And if I miss it, I'm sure um, Stuart will ping me a message. So I'm looking at my phone now because it's just off camera. 
Okay. I think we have plenty of people in the room so far. 96 people in the room already. Good morning and good afternoon and good evening. So we was looking at this plate. This is where the main focus has been. And this is one of our A5 poetry plates. And um, I really liked the frame that was on this design, as well as the, the poem as well. And we had a look at how we could shorten it. And last week, I think it was for, was it for Karin? We looked at how we could extend it to make it bigger as well. Um, so, so we had a look at sort of different layouts for that. Then we had a look at different ways of coloring. Now, I normally, when I'm coloring, I tend to go with my pergola liner pencils because they're safe. And if I make a um, mistake, I can rub them out. But more recently, I've really been enjoying using the Dorso crayons. A lovely sort of palette of colors. We've got a, a bright, a lively color, and we have our natural colors. And normally, from what I'm aware of uh, in the past, is that they would be more for sort of doing sort of like coloring large areas, although you can use them in smaller areas. And we had some great tips from Glynis and a fantastic tip from Pat Hoskins um, with a, an old pair of tights. <laughs> so if you want to know what to do with your old pairs of tights, then go back to episode five, where we discussed that matter. Um, but I've really enjoyed working with them because it, it, they're different. And um, yeah, they're just different. And we've been looking at mixing the colors up. We've been having a play with the mix mats and trying different ways of applying it. So I've really enjoyed working. And I'm going to use these a lot more now that I feel a little bit more comfortable with them. And they also have that safety net that if I do make a mistake, I can still rub them out. So, um, so yeah, so we've looked at the, let's pop that to one side, pop those over there. And this is a piece, let's move the, the plates as well. Let's clear the decks. And this is the, what we were heading towards. Now I'm going to put it on the black and it, you can see some color, but it's not that vibrant, is it? So we took the frame we took the verse or the poem, but then we also took that lovely rose from the Jane Lesserenko Rose and Lattice plate that we worked with previously. And roses are one of my most favorite flowers. And in my garden, they're all blooming now. Some of them are flowering again for the second time. I've got pinks and reds and lilacs yellows, oranges, multicolors. They really, I just love a rose. And um, so I thought this would be fit great within the actual frame. Now, if you're new to Groovy, we have a fantastic collection from Jane Nesterenko, where you have, there's, um, I wonder if I've still got them here. I sort of had a bit of a tidy up. I say a tidy up. I just shuffled everything and moved it around. Yeah, here we go. I think these are, yes, let's have a look. He's there, it's just bending down. Okay. So if you like flowers, the Jane Nesterenko, maybe Stuart could pop a link up to Jane Nesterenko's flowers for us. Um, you've got a different rose. So it's a different view, different foliage around the outside. You've also got one of my favorite flowers, the Agapanthus. And I've got four in my garden at the moment, three of which, two are that lovely traditional um, lilac-y color. One is a little bit paler, and I'm just waiting for the white one to flower. So we've got the Agapanthus, then 
See, I haven't got any of these in my garden, but I do like them. Dahlias or dahlias. No, dahlias. Um, my nan used to have loads of different dahlias in her garden. And um, yeah, so we've got dahlias as well. And then what is the fourth one? The fourth one in the collection is the fuchsia. And I've got a couple of fuchsias in the garden that are just flowering at the moment. So they're the main sort of floral images. And then each of them come with like an accessories plate. So you have the Agapanthus nameplate. And you've got these lovely borders on there. Beautiful butterfly. But it's very similar in size to the rose that comes within there. Then we have our dahlia nameplate. So single stems. Then we have the roses nameplate. All of, you'll notice each of the nameplates have these fantastic um, borders. Um, <laughs> and then finally, we have the fuchsia um, nameplate. Lovely hummingbird. I think the hummingbird would look nice within that frame as well. So it's all about sort of just having choices because a frame is a frame, so to speak. And, um, and what I chose to do was work with the frame and introduce the flower from the design we'd been working on previously. So, so we introduce that. Let me grab a piece of, I'm gonna put a piece of white card underneath so we can sort of have a look at the, the vibrancy of the color. And all of this has been coloured in using the Dorso crayons. If I turn it over, we can look on the back. So it's a little bit more vibrant. And I decided to go, I think we all decided, oops, sorry, decided to go with um, a piece of companion paper from Toscana. And remember, we flicked through the book last week. Um, and... There was a, a sort of like a more of a, a lighter colour, wasn't there? But I felt that was, did that just look, oh no, too, too limey. But this lovely orangey peach was perfect for that. But I still wanted to add a little bit more depth to my colouring. So all of the colouring has been done on the back. And we use the Dorso crayons, the mix mat, the Dorso oil, the blending pens to apply the colour. So for this session, what I want to do, I now want to go back and use the Pergoliner pencils and add a little bit more depth because you can use both of them um, together. Okay. So if you're not sure when it comes to colouring, it's always a good idea to trace out an element and just practice. So when I was trying different ways of applying the dorso crayons on my leaves, I had a practice on here first. And the same when I was looking for my color for the frame. Okay. So we're going to have a look at, where's all my pencils gone? I have them all here. Yep, they're all hiding from me. Well, not all of them. I've got most of them here. Have I got the right ones that I want? Okay. So who's crafting along with me and, or is everyone just watching and recovering from their purchases in the half price member sale? <laughs> okay, so what is Pat telling me? Okay, look. Pat is saying, Paul, just a few square inches of the tights fabric wrapped tightly around cotton wool used to do the job with colouring parchment. We had to improvise as there wasn't the great choice of products there is now. No laughing, we are talking 30 years ago. I totally get that. Um, and it is, it's about adapting, isn't it? And sort of seeing what you can, what you've got. Um, cotton wool balls, um, I don't even know whether you can still get them now. Um, I think somebody said um, that they'd stopped doing them, I don't know. 
but I think it, it's a great, I suppose in a way it's sort of like, um, it's a bigger area, isn't it, to apply and to smooth out. So it was a great tip. Maybe I'll try it one day. Maybe I'll see if I can find a pair of tights somewhere. Don't start sending me tights, please. <laughs> I'm sure I could ask one of the, the ladies here in the office if they have <laughs> an old pair of tights. I, I could try it. Yeah, give it a go. Could be the next best thing since sliced bread. Don't know. But um, yeah, I'm going to give it a go. I will. Stuart. Can you remind me later? I need to ask somebody for a pair of tights. <laughs> I'm going to give it a go. I really am. Maybe next week, if I can find a pair of tights in time. <laughs> oh, this is so fun. I love this. I love the, the, the interaction with everybody at home. Um, because I don't know what used how it used to be done traditionally um i'm only working now with what i have in front of me and what i know um works for me and because we didn't know what the rules were then there was no rules to break so to speak now i'm looking for my dark green pencil those groovy gremlins maybe they've run off to get some donuts um, I'm sure I've got a dark green here. Uh, do, 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 do. Let's have a look. I bet it's hiding on the table somewhere. Never mind. We will work with what we have. We'll go with the flow, as they say. All right, let's pull up a chair. Oh, it's right in front of me. Right in front of me. In the pot. Grab those. Grab those. Now, there was something else I wanted to try as well. I'm not sure whether I want to try it on this, but I'm going to try it. Because they're here as well. The Pergamano gel pens. And the, the metallic, so you've got like a a lilac, you've got gold, you've got pink, you've got a white and a silver. And um, I did have a play with them a couple of weeks ago before we went to air. And um, I thought it might add a nice little touch here and there, maybe to the ribbon, because I haven't put any colour on the ribbon. So maybe we'll try that later. Mmm. What do you reckon? You know what? I'm going to try it now. Okay. Pencils to one side. Let me grab this plate. Let's move that out of the way. I want to see, because obviously if I'm going to use them, I need to use them on the front. Now I'm just going to zoom in a little bit. So where's my little note gone to say which way I need to go? And zoom in slowly. Slowly. Oh, sorry. Too fast. Okay. Hands up in the room. Who has the gel pens? Who's used them? And what have you done with them? I, in your projects. <laughs> Not what have you done with them? I told you, didn't I? It's going to be a funny session. It's not normally like, if you're tuning in for the first time, it's not normally this. Well, maybe it is. I'm just going to wipe parchment. So if I put my glasses on. Okay. Right. So if I just trace it out, I just want this part here. I'm just replicating the area in which I want to pop that colour. Okay, I'm going to do it a couple of times to see what it looks like. Now I wonder, so I, I, sometimes it's all about um, about playing, doesn't it? And trying things. 
and there's nothing like trying something live on Facebook in front of an audience. Okay. Question from Mo, when does the sale finish? It finished at midnight last night, Mo. Yeah, midnight last night it finished. Well, it didn't actually finish probably till about nine o'clock this morning because we had to um, finish off the process to, to run, to repopulate. Question from Jane, are you using them on the front? I was planning to. What do you reckon, Jane? I suppose because they've got that metallic, I suppose you've got to put them on the front. Um, so what's going to say? I've got the white, the gold, and the silver. Have used them straight on the front. You also use the gold or silver to write greetings inside a dark card. <laughs> Mo, that's naughty. Well, it's not naughty. <coughs> yeah, it ran for it was fourteen days. So um, yeah. Okay. Let's have a look. Yeah, that's what I thought, Jane, as well. So let's go for the lilac. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do, I do know, hang about, hang about, he says. Let me get, oh, stretch. Linus was saying about using them on um, dark cards to write greetings. So let's take a piece of, black card and let's take a piece of white card whoops sorry okay so let's see if we write c l clarity crafts in black clarity crafts on white okay i will hold it to a different camera shortly because it doesn't look i mean i can see so let's do the same it's lovely on black it's got like um a two-tone type of color effect clarity Crafts. Okay. Then we've got the gold. What I need to do, because my hand is smearing uh, a need. Where's my groovy guard? Just pop that on there. Clarity. Sometimes, rather than go fast. You know, like the tape runners, if you go too fast, it can not work. So we've got clarity crafts there. So if it's, it goes like this, see where it's, it stopped working, then all I'm going to do is just hold it upright and just squibble a little bit. There we go. And what it does, just gets it going again. Clarity. I can feel it. So all it is is just a little ball bearing within the, the tip. Okay, so that's the gold. So what else have I got? I've got the silver. Yeah. So let's go. Nice. Okay. Who has the gel pens? Clarity, crafts, 
what is Jane saying? Um, if you trace the lines with a number two tool, you can then trace over on the front with the metallic pens. You have to go slower with the pens as the ink is slightly thicker. If it stops working, scribble in the palm of your hand. That will get it working better than scribbling on card. Right, there we go. See, fantastic to have the design team in the room. Lots of top tips there. So, um, so let's have it white. Okay. So. Clarity. Crafts. I'm not even going to bother whiting, whiting on the white, writing on the white, because it's white on white. La 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 la, la 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 la. Can you hear me? There is a clicking sound. Anybody hear me? Can you hear me yet? Back now. Did you hear me going la 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 la? <laughs> Very strange. No idea. Stuart says back to normal. Define normal, Stuart. Uh, <laughs> no idea um, why that happened. I apologies. I apologies. I apologize even. Um, yeah, I had full signal, full batteries. You know what? Sometimes if something stops working, nine times out of 10, switching it off and switching it back on again um, tends to work. And luckily, it worked on that occasion. Um, no idea why, because everything was really normal. I could see the little green bar. Um, 
it wasn't singing it was the noise i was making <laughs> okay so i don't know where i um cut off but let's go back was i thought i was talking about the purple wasn't i so we've colored in the purple i wonder whether it picks up the, the shimmer oh there we go you can look at that you can see the shimmer now can't you on the purple pete says i'll make it rain if i sing yeah <laughs> um i can't sing it says you wouldn't try it with a pacemaker no probably not a good idea <laughs> okay so let's have a look at the, the pink so i'm repeating that process i'm just trying to stay away from and it works slightly differently on the parchment than it does on card because um the card is porous and the parchment's non-porous so it it sort of sits on top so we've got the lovely pink um so we've done the pink, we've done the lilac or purple, whichever way you want to call it. Let's try the gold. Now my gold, I think, needs a bit of encouragement. Remember when I was doing it on the card? So let's try the trick on the hand. I haven't used these pens in a long time. I reckon I need a new gold. Oh, there's also a bronze as well. I forgot about the bronze. I need to get myself a new gold. That gold has been in my... Let's try the, the bronze. Oh, the bronze is nice. I like the bronze. Let's go over that gold. Nice. Go about the one. See, I didn't put them all out of there. What brands are the pens? They are Pergamano, Pat. There we go. Pergamano's own range um, of gel pens. So they're 0 0.7, 0 0.7. I think mean, they're all 0 0.7. And then let's have a look at the silver. Nice. A little circular motions. I know I digress slightly, but I was looking at these the other week and I thought, oh, I want to have a play. See, I don't have a steady hand in relation to sort of tracing out the design. Um, So I, for me personally, I wouldn't feel comfortable. I'm going to give it a go. Nothing like a bit of live pressure to add. So let me have it so now. You can you can definitely see that metallic shimmer now, can't you? Yeah, look at that. Really nice. The bronze would look nice with my orange rose. Yes, Jane, I totally agree. So I'm going to go for the bronze for my ribbon on my piece of artwork. Okay. Now, I wonder. Mm. Mix mat. If I scribble out some colour on my mix mat. Let me take, see, I'm experimenting now. Let's take a nib. Oh, I've got all my pencils out. I've got everything out of the box today. Okay. 
Right, so. Let's take a nib. I don't know whether this is going to work. I'm going to try it. Mmm. So you get the the colour. Let me see. I... And it's got a bit of a shimmer. Not much, but it has a bit. Okay. So. All right, let me try something else. Let me, I know I'm using the oil map, but this was just the nearest map that I had. Now I wonder, I know where we, we've played with the a dry water brush before. Um, I know it's got green on the end. Mmm. Even softer. Let's pop that white piece of card underneath. So the blending pen um, gives better coverage. Try mixing two colours together, shall we? Should we try? Okay. What colour? So if I do, let's do the purple. And should I do the bronze? I don't know what those two colours are meant to give me. But we can try. So. So they do mix. Probably not the, the right colours to mix. I've got a sort of a, a darker shade. Okay, purple and white. See, I'm being led by the audience. So let's go again. Do some purple. And try blending the blending pen over colour. What do you mean by that, Pat? Sorry. Um, Okay, so the white, let's get the white going. The white, oh, there we go. The little dots, right, the ball bearing just in that one just needed a little bit of activation. I don't think you can use torso oil with it. Um, yeah, I don't know what the door said. Oh, should we try it? Right. We can only try, can't we? I'll do, you, you are, you make the suggestions and I'll give it a go. What have I got to lose? <laughs> right, I'm going to put the torso oil on the sponge. Okay. So, uh, Pat, try blending over colour. So, as you would over the pencil. Right. Okay. I think I know what you mean. Right. Okay. So, no, the dorsal oil. Well, I say no. Yeah. The dorsal oil just breaks up the, the ink. Um, Makes it go further, but mm, no, maybe not. No, I don't think so. Okay, so now what Pat is saying. So Pat, forgive me if I'm wrong. My colouring skills are very basic. So I have a colour of the pencils, I have a colour of the pens, I colour of the door. So, so when you say, as you would over the pencil, I say, so if I've coloured... The pencil, so if I do some colouring with a pencil, uh, let's have a look. So if I take, I don't know, um, 
we've got a purple. So if I take some purple, wrong purple, it's the other one. This one. So this is on the back. Okay. So if I turn it over, and then I take the purple. So I think that the pen blocks out whatever's underneath. Hmm. Would I put the pencil on top? No, the pencil just sit. It's too waxy. Um. Okay. So could you uh, go rewind, rewind? Uh, try blending the pen over the color. Yeah, I think the the wax ones are too waxy, but maybe it'll work with a water with the, one of the aqua pencils let's try let me grab an aqua pencil really digressed on this don't we um so i'm doing it on top no it's it it's smeary Okay, homework, <laughs> homework is not homework. Why don't we all have a play? Who Hands up who's got the, the gel pens. I know many of you had, and I know many of you have recently ordered them in the, the cell. So maybe when you get them, have a play, see what you can come up with, and then next week, bring it back to the table and share what you found. Because sometimes just playing, like I'm doing now, just asking the questions um can you do this can you do that unless we try sometimes we, we won't find out whether it works or not and because we're only doing it on a scrap piece of parchment it doesn't matter does it but we may come up with something amazing now jane was talking about going over the, the white line okay i'm going to give it a go i'm going to give it a go for the sake of giving it a go. Okay. So if I so I'm gonna hold oh I don't oh. <laughs> I'm holding my breath. I don't know why I'm holding my breath. Breathe, 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 breathe. Mm, I'm not sure. It does look nice. I suppose what I need is a better image, don't I, rather than just a line. I am sort of quite pleased with that. Um, but what I need, I tell you what, let's go to my practice piece here. Okay, I'm going to go to the copper the copper, not the policeman, or the bronze, copper or the bronze. Okay. I need a drink for this. Coffee. Right, okay. Steady. I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> Groovy guard. Groovy guard. Oh no. Okay. I suppose it's like that trick that Barb says when, you know, when you're doodling, you're doodling, you're looking at the, slowly, okay, Jane, slowly, you're looking at the, the road in front rather than looking at the wheel. Slowly. See, I, d I can't go slow. And I'm scared to. I'm scared. That's much better. Speed is definitely makes a difference. <laughs> well, I think it does. Or lack of speed. 
That's yeah. Okay. It really is. You've got to go slow. And you've got to try not to overthink it. Don't be scared, we're all hiding behind you. <laughs> oh dear. I've got 113 people cowering behind me. I can feel you all behind me. Oh, no, 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 no. Slow, 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 slow. Okay. I do require a bit more practice okay but i think i like the result Look. yeah i do like the result don't all hold your breath please breathe please that was my first one where i went too fast but the second one definitely needs let me come in on this one where we're going. Definitely needs more practice. There we go. So Jane's, Jane is saying, um, great tip. And it makes perfect sense. If you um, have done the tracing with the number two tool, then the embossed line wouldn't have been as high. Yeah, totally makes sense. Now I've just spotted the time and i haven't shown you the new and exclusive because i got carried away with the gel pens okay lids on pens dorso oil out of the way are you ready okay gremlins about internet's gone on my side i think i'm still broadcasting is there anybody still in the room anybody there somebody talk to me Will it dry sufficiently so I won't spare? Well, I've put it to one side and I'll wipe my finger over it before the end of the session. Um, right, everyone can see. Okay, perfect. Okay. You don't want to be looking at me. You want to be looking. This is the new release from Linda Williams. I need to zoom out. So, for those of you that are familiar um, with... Linda Williams layering frames. This is set two of the collection. Okay, so as previously, these are A4 square plates. Okay, and there's three A4 square plates. So the first one is the country cottage. For me, this frame around the outside is like, um, reminds me of sort of like an embroidery style. It's lovely, okay. So we've got the, the country cottage. The next one we have is the farm in the valley. Okay, so you can see you've got more different layers of frames. So you've got the little scene, you've got the little dog and the cat, you've got the sheep, snowdrops, farmhouse, the fields. I mean, look at that landscape. Lovely frames. Then as we've said previously, in each collection, there's going to be a dotted cross stitch design. And this one, I think everybody's going to love. Look at this. <laughs> okay, so we've got snowdrops. We've got four different corners. We've got so many different circular frames got one two three four five minimum that's one that's one that's one that one that one depending on um <laughs> i said her eyes won't stay shut and her purse is wiggling okay <laughs> and then with each of the collections we then have an a5 square companion plate so enjoy the little things in life because one day you will glance back and realize that they were the big things. Isn't that true? Crocuses, primrose, snowdrops. 
don't know what I think they're primroses as well. I told Linda what they are. Um, okay, so they're the designs. Okay, <laughs> I'm just seeing all the comments. Let's have a look at some artwork. Okay, so the first piece is from Linda Williams. So Linda has taken the smaller frame, the companion plate, the farm in the valley. Look at that. Beautiful. Only a few sheep in this field, they've all escaped. Then the next piece is from Jill Ascom. So a lot smaller, using the smaller inner frame. The sheep have been found. Looks like a bit of, um, oh, what's that technique where you, oh, with the one needle bolt or the one needle fine and you tap, 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 tap. I can't think what it's called. So this is a piece from Jill. Then the next piece, same design, but bigger card. This one is from Carol Baker. Okay, and Carol is lovely. This is using the designer parchment. Stippling, that's it. Stippling, 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 stippling. Maggie Craner's favorite technique. <laughs> then this, I love this. Oh. I say you love, I love all of the, the designs that the design team are coming. This is a piece from Linda Williams. Using the frame, creating an aperture, and then all of these have been cut out individually. Wow. I think this might be one of the demos. I haven't gone through the demos yet for Thursday's show. Then you'll all be familiar with this type of artwork. This is from Francis. Francis not done this piece. Look at that. It really is. It's got the, the gold home sweet home. Let me bring this one up. It's like painting on porcelain. It really is. Okay. Then next piece is from the lovely Josie Davidson and what Josie's done do you remember the Christmas plates collection from last month use a frame doesn't look Christmassy at all does it and it's all down to the coloring in so that's very clever bringing the previous collection in with the new collection then the next piece is created by Linda with the dotted cross stitch. Look at that. I'm just, well, there aren't words. The artwork in front of me, there's no words, seriously, to describe this. Then we've got another one from um, Francis. Look at that. Then we have, I love this one as well. This is from Jill. Look. There really are no words. I think this is one of the cards coming up that I've got to demo. This is from Linda using the companion plate. So the, the idea of the companion plate is it creates like a, a corner that you can wrap the layering frames around the outside. Okay, stunning artwork, um, white work on these. I need to practice. <laughs> then the next piece is from Julie Campbell using the companion plate. I like the way that Julie's entwined um, that frame around behind the flowers. And I would say, I might be wrong, but I think that's been coloured in with white pencil. I'll have to, let me have a read in the back, so it probably doesn't say. It doesn't say, but I reckon. And then the final piece to share with you is another piece from Francis Knott. I don't know if I just give that a little 
tilt. Friends are flowers in the garden of life. So, what can I say? Stunning artwork. Okay, so thank you, Julie. Sorry, I forgot you was in the room. So let me go back to that piece of artwork from Julie. I have to be careful. Where has it gone? Um, let me find it. Come on, there we go. So, so if I, I'm going to bring this up. So this is a piece by Julie. So I thought that they would have been coloured in with white pencil. So what? Julie's saying that she's done part embossing and then coloured in with the white pencil. There we go. Love those crocuses. And I think they are primrose. I'll check with Linda, but I'm sure they're primroses as well. But they're a lovely flower. So, oh, what an hour that's been. Didn't do anything I planned to do. <laughs> Ken Kilminster. Okay, so let me give you a summary of what's coming up over on Thursday and Friday on TV. So Thursday at three o'clock and seven o'clock, it's um, In the Shack with Barb on TV on Crate and Craft. And that sees the launch of some brand new nested square doodle dies. Barb is just, she can't stop playing with them. They were due to be launched on the Friday morning, but she wants to launch them on Thursday afternoon at three o'clock. Okay, so if you love our doodle dies, then cow slips. Thank you, Jane, cow slips. I just saw that. So three o'clock and seven o'clock on Thursday on Crate and Craft is in the shack with Barb. Um, so we've got a new stamp set, and a new groovy plate and five brand new nested square doodle dies. Then at four o'clock and eight o'clock is the launch of the Linda Williams layering frames part two um, groovy collection in the countryside. Um, they are exclusive to the TV. They won't be available from us until 9 a.m. on Saturday morning. Then on Friday morning, I've got the final hour of the new and exclusive at 8 a.m. And then nine o'clock and one o'clock is technically the official launch of the nested square doodle dies and panel, frames and panels. That's all I'm saying, frames and panels um, in conjunction with some of Barb's favorite designs. So I think on there we've got the town's house, we've got the abstract dandelion, and um yeah um so that's so we've got one two we've got four hours on thursday and three hours on friday so all i can say is it's gonna be a lot of fun it really is they're gonna be great shows i need to work out what the lovely linda and lynn jackson has sent me to showcase um the new and exclusive I've seen the demos from Barb for the Shack Show. You're gonna love it. Um, and Barb's currently working on the Friday shows. So as always, thank you once again for your company. Really enjoyed it. Great having the feedback and the question. Does this work? Does that work? Give it a go. You never know. You may come up with the next best thing. Um, thank you for Stuart. Thank you for the design team. Um, as always, I can't believe where the time goes. Um, so really enjoyed it. So next week we're going to carry on with that frame or get sidetracked elsewhere. And then there'll be a week's break. And then when we come back, we're going to use the multi-needle volume two handbook from Linda Williams. So enjoy the rest of your week. Hope you can join us on Thursday or Friday on the TV. Um, otherwise, we'll see you back on Monday in the shack. Take care now. Bye-bye.